In 3.4, we're going to review the ideas of velocity and other rates of change. Some, hopefully, some of the most of this stuff is very familiar. We may use a little bit different notation on some of it, but hopefully, it won't uh, stump you. <clears throat> so, when we say rate of change, we really mean the instantaneous rate of change, even if we don't say the word instantaneous, and even when uh, the variable x, the independent variable, is not uh, representing time, it's still going to be a rate of change. So, for example, in the green here, we see find the change in the volume of a cube with respect to its side length h, or k, x rather, sorry, x. So, we're imagining that we have some cube, and it's going to be x on a side. So, x by x by x. So, its volume is going to be x cubed. So, that means that it's... Uh, the rate of change of the volume with respect to its side length x, then that maybe is more clearly written in Leibniz notation. We're differentiating the volume with respect to x, and so that's just going to be 3x squared. Then in part b, it says evaluate that when x is 5, so we would say then that instantaneous rate of change of the volume with respect to x is going to be 3 times 5 squared, which is 75. In part C, it says if the volume is measured in cubic inches and the side length is measured in inches, what would dv dx be measured in? So these are kind of strange measurements, but the volume, so it's going to be in cubic inches per inch. It's kind of strange. Or you could even say, Square inches would be okay as well, because it would be perfectly correct to write that in that manner, where the, you have your cubic inches, cubic inches per uh, inch, and that would also be okay to be called square inches. So motion on a line, x of t is a position of an object on the x-axis at time t. So our object is going to move along a horizontal line, either right or left or holding still, kind of like maybe a squirrel running along uh, a power line. The displacement of an object from time t to time t plus delta t is given by x of t plus delta t minus x of t and is also sometimes called delta x, the change in x. Average velocity, remember, is that change in x over the change in t, which is in our using our delta notation. It's going to be the x of t plus delta t minus x of t all over delta t. Hopefully you recognize that as our difference quotient, and that's also uh, from Algebra 2. That's the slope of a line, in particular, a line through two points on our position curve, which we then call as a secant line. The instantaneous velocity means we take the average velocity and we add in this very important limit as delta t goes to zero. So notationally, we can refer to that as x prime of t, or a lot of times it's more clear to keep in mind what those variables are by calling it dx dt, the change in x with respect to t. So on the next panel here, we see also re reviewing here, hopefully it's review, is that speed is the absolute value of velocity. We know that acceleration, a of t, is also the derivative of the velocity. And since the velocity is the derivative of position, that makes acceleration the second derivative of the position function with respect to time. So acceleration due to gravity, depending if we're English or metric, in English measure, it's going to be negative 32 feet per second squared. That's oftentimes just referred to as g, and then that way you can just, from the context of the problem, decide whether we're metric or in English measure. If we say the initial velocity refers to the velocity at time zero, and if we just use that as our symbol v sub zero, and we call the initial height the height at time zero s sub zero, then what we have is kind of a big, um, uh, a big, uh, what do I want to say? differential equation. So we could say that 
uh, if our acceleration, if we do this, say, in English measure first, so acceleration, which is the second derivative of time, or the first derivative of velocity, is just the negative 32, then if we integrate both sides, then we'll get the velocity is going to be negative 32t, and plus our constant of integration is going to be c, and we know the initial velocity is v sub 0, so that means when we plug in 0 for t, we're going to get the velocity at time 0 is going to be our v sub 0, which is c. So that makes our velocity equation negative 32t plus v sub 0. We can integrate that again, and integrating the first derivative of position will get us to position, and integrating the negative 32t, since the integral of t is 1 half t squared, will be negative 16t squared. Now we get the v sub 0t, and we get a constant of integration c again. This time we know that the initial height is s sub 0, so that's going to tell us that s sub 0 is going to be plugging in the zeros, for the t's tells us that s sub 0 is equal to c, and so we get that our position in English measure is going to be negative 16 t, t squared plus whatever the initial velocity was times t plus the initial height. In a similar fashion, you can see that if we were in a metric measure, we would have gotten, instead of negative 16, it would have been half of the acceleration due to gravity in metric measurement, so we would have gotten a negative 4.9 t squared plus that v sub 0 t plus the s sub 0. So uh, I'm going to pause this a minute and write down a little word problem for an example, and we can work that. Okay, so here's our information. A particle moves along a line so that its position at time t greater than or equal to 0 is s of t equals t squared minus 4t plus 3, where s is measured in meters and t in seconds. So first question, let's find the displacement during the first two seconds. So remember, displacement is the change in position. So we are going to take then s, I guess we called it s of, let me start that over, s of 2 minus s of 0. And so plugging in 2, I think we would get, uh, let's see, 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3. And then plugging in 0 would be just minus the 3. So that's 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative minus 3 is negative 4. And the units on that are going to be S units, which are going to be in meters. So what that's saying is in the first two seconds it moved left 4, if we're going right and left, or down 4 if we're going up and down. Part B says find the average velocity during the first four seconds. So average velocity means we're going to take the position at time 4 minus position at time 0 over 4 minus 0. So we said, let's see, S of 4 is going to be, let's see, S of 4 is going to be 16, 4 squared minus 16 plus 3. So I think that's going to be 3. And s of 0 is also 3, and so that means it's going to be 0. So the units on that would be meters per second. So our average velocity was 0. The velocity at time 4, now that's uh, implied then is the instantaneous velocity. So velocity, remember, is going to be the derivative of position. And so differentiating the s of t... We're going to get 2t minus 4, and so then the v of 4, the velocity at time 4, is going to be 2 times the 4 minus 4, so that's going to be 4, and that's again going to be meters per second. The acceleration is going to be the second derivative of position, or the first derivative of velocity. Since we already got the velocity, or the first derivative of position is 2t minus 4, 
then that's going to be 2, and the units there are going to be meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. That would be acceptable as well. Okie doke.